G'day guys, it's Lee Pros here from fstoplounge.com. I'm just wanting to give you a quick tutorial on keywords as a request by a user on Facebook. So, why are keywords so important? Why do we need to use them in uh, Lightroom? Well, I'll tell you now, if you've got thousands of photos, uh, like I've got almost 90,000 photos on one hard drive here, um, it's much easier to search for your images. So, where do you go and add your keywords? And how do you utilize these to find images later on? Well, first of all, I'm just going to go and import something and just show you exactly how to add the keyword. So first of all, your images will actually come up when your card's plugged in. These aren't great images. So they're just random images I'm using. So for this case here, it's a Fujifilm X-E1 camera that I've photographed. So in the keyword section, when you go before you import them, you can then type in the appropriate keywords which will be suitable for that image or in this case this group of image images so you can select individual images or you can select all of them um, you can do this at a later stage which I'll show you later on in the tutorial but for this case I'm just going to type Fujifilm XE1 and I'm just going to type Fuji and camera so there are three keywords that I can use to locate these photos at a later stage so it's very easy once you've done all your um, keywording to individual images, you can then go and go import. Now, I'm not going to do that this time, but uh, we'll just go to cancel. And what will actually happen is you'll notice, uh, I'll use this Africa file here as an example. Um, when you add keywords to an image, this little symbol here appears, and that's your little photo has keywords icon. And you can see what keywords would appear down the bottom here. So in the case of the Fujifilm, it would say Fujifilm XE1, Fuji, and camera. But in this case, they're pictures of lioness um, in Africa. And you can see that I've written appropriate keywords to suit these images. So I've got Africa Animal Hunter, Kruger National Park, Lion, Lioness, and the scientific name Predator and South Africa. So I can find these images at a later stage. Now, I've got some Africa images across all my hard drives. So this is where keywords can really come into play. Now, uh, you can see here I've made an adjustment on this image, which is why I've got it selected over this, this one here. So I'm now going to group together all my Lioness photos from this Africa file. So the way I do that, um, I go down into the keyword list. So every keyword that you've typed in to Lightroom at any stage will appear in this keyword list. So, like in Bridge, you can actually type a keyword and just show those images. But for this case here, I just want to go down to Lioness, okay? So, you can use the search bar at the top, but hey, let's just do it the hard way. Okay, H-R-J-K-L, Lioness. Okay, so you can see here, all the appropriate keywords are ticked um, that are associated to this image. So now with Lioness, if you hover over it, you'll notice that there will be a little right arrow. If you click on that, what it does, it will group all of the images that it finds on my hard drives that are linked in with the, um, the Lightroom catalog. And it will actually group them all together so I can easily see them. Now, what I've done with these images, I've actually rated them as well by giving them fives, but uh, it, that's just another way of finding the great ones out of it. I could go down here and click on the, the, the fives and it will just show me the fives within that set. So it's very easy to navigate and find that photo that you're looking for. Now the way you add a rating as well, we might as well talk about that while we're on keywords, is you just click on the image and you choose one to five. Um, and you just press the number corresponding to the, the rating that you want to give that photo. So for me, that's a five and it's very easy to find. Now at the top here, you've also got all the keywords listed, okay? In Lioness, we have 667, and I've also switched on aspect ratio because I may only just want a portrait or a landscape image. You can customize this view. I think the default is four settings, and all you do is you click on this little uh, line here, and you go add this column or remove this column. If you want to add another column, it adds a third set, and then you just need to select some criteria for it to add. So for instance, you can just um, add smart preview status, you can add the country if you've typed that in metadata, or the ISO speed. So let's say I want one with the lowest ISO, so at ISO 400, it's going to narrow down that even more. Um, so you can really utilize this sort of 
system to navigate and find the image that you want ready for export when you go into your library. Now we are still in the library setting here. What happens if you go into a setting, uh, let's just click none, so turn off that and go back to the African theme. Let's say you you haven't actually imported um, keywords at the time of going to import and typing in the keywords. What do you do if you want to add keywords after? Well, it's very simple. Um, Lightroom uses a technique called painting and it's this little paint can here. You just click on that and all you do is you paint exactly the keywords that are listed here. So for instance, um, I could just go lion, okay, comma lioness, put a comma between all of them and all you do is you just paint exactly the ones that you want okay it's really really simple and that's automatically adding those keywords to those photos so that's one easy way to actually navigate and find and add keywords to the images later on now if I close this keyword you can see I've added lots of keywords over my time um, so my newer photos I haven't actually added keywords um, that's just because I'm slack um, you can actually have keyword suggestions on each image. Uh, this will automatically come up with commonly used keywords, which you can just click and it will add them to this keyword tag section at the at the top here. Now, say if you're just based in Australia and you want to tag all your photos Australia and then say a state of some description, whether it be Victoria or something like that, you can use a keyword set. And you can actually create a set which is going to be uh, generic to most photos that you're going to be taking. So I would highly recommend creating a keyword set. What you can do is go into uh, edit set. So let's just say that one. So keywords you can say uh, the preset is going to be wedding photography. So you can add specific keywords that would uh, be associated with wedding photography and the photos that you're going to be taking. So when you go and choose a wedding photo, it's automatically going to add, when, once you've highlighted the photos that you want like that, and let's say we don't want that one, whoops, we don't want that one, um, you can then go into the keyword set and say that you just want the wedding set associated with that one. Okay, and you can create a set to suit your, your style of photography. So I really hope that this is one great way, well, I really hope that this uh, sort of idea and adding keywords is beneficial to you. Um, also, if you're doing stock photography, when you go out and export your photos and you upload the photo to um, a stock photography website or something like that, or even online to your online gallery, a lot of these embedded keywords um, are added to your metadata in the actual image itself. So when someone's searching on your site for a particular photo, let's say it's a lioness photo, or something like that, they type in Lioness, boom, the keywords are automatically added in the metadata on that image when it's uploaded to your website or uploaded to Flickr or any or Google Plus or anything like that, and they will see your Lioness photos because you've tagged the keywords. So that's one of the reasons why you go out and you tag your images. So I hope that was helpful and make sure you sign up to fstoplounge.com and you follow us on social media for more great photography tips. Thanks very much.